This is a tutorial on understanding derivatives. Now before we get into the concept of a derivative and how to find it, we must first build upon concepts that we already know. So to do that, let's first take a look at a graph. So here we could see the parabolic curve of a quadratic function. Now let's say we want to find the average rate of change of the function between two points. Let's say from x equals 2 to x equals 5. Well, if we were to go about doing that, we would draw a line that would connect those two dots together. Now a line such as this, where it intersects two points along a curve, is known as a secant line. And if we want to find the average rate of change of the function between these two points, we just need to find the slope of that secant line. Now if you remember, the way that we calculate slope is by taking the change in y and dividing it by the change in x. So let's use the x and y values from our two points in order to calculate that. So first, we'll take our y2, which is 10, and then minus our y1, which is 7, and then we'll divide by our x2, which is 5, and then minus our x1, which is 2. Now when we simplify this, 10 minus 7 gives us a 3 in our numerator, and 5 minus 2 gives us a 3 in our denominator. And 3 divided by 3 ultimately gives us a value of 1. So the slope of our secant line, or the average rate of change of our function from x equals 2 to x equals 5, is 1. Now that we understand that, let's build upon this concept a little further. Based on the previous example that we just did, let's build a general formula for finding the average rate of change. So first of all, we still have our secant line going from one point to another point along our curve. Now we can say that the x value at our first point is just x. And then the distance between our first x value and our second x value will be delta x, representing that change in x, going from x1 to x2. Now what we could do with our second x value is we could label it x plus this additional change in x, because the distance from 0 to x is x, and the distance from x to our second x value is change in x. So our second x value is equivalent to x plus our delta x. Now based on this, we could say that our two points are labeled as follows. Our first x will have an input of x and an output of f of x. And then the input for our second point will be x plus delta x, and the output will be f of x plus delta x. Now with those two points, let's calculate the average rate of change. So delta y over delta x. Well, delta y is going to be the change between our two output values, which will be f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And then that'll be over the change in x, which will be the difference between our two input values. So our second input value is x plus delta x, and then minus our first input value, which is x. Now you may notice that in our denominator, we have a positive x and a negative x. So when we combine those two together, they'll cancel each other out, leaving us with a simplified version being f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. Now that we've made a general formula for the average rate of change, what if we wanted to find the instantaneous rate of change at this one point right here? Well, the way that we could do that is by taking our second point and moving it closer and closer to our first one. So let's see what happens when we do that. 
At this point, we moved it a little closer, and you could see that our delta x got a little smaller. Now if we move it again, and bring it even closer, you could see that our delta x is a lot smaller. Now if we bring it so close, that it looks like our second point is almost on top of our first one, you'll see that our delta x gets extremely close to being zero, but not quite. This is what we need to do in order to find the instantaneous rate of change. So when we're finding the instantaneous rate of change, we'll still use the general formula that we did with the average rate of change, but this time we'll want our delta x to approach zero. So in other words, we want to find the slope of our function as our change in x is approaching zero. So to modify our general formula that we have below, we could change it to look like this. Now as far as this tutorial goes, I use delta x in order to help you understand where this concept of a derivative comes from, which is the same thing as finding an instantaneous rate of change. But just so you know, conventionally, rather than using delta x, typically the letter h is used. Now that we've found the formula for finding a derivative or an instantaneous rate of change, let's actually use it on an example. So here we want to find the derivative of this function f of x equals negative x squared plus 8x minus 5 when x equals 2. So before we start, let's write this formula so that we could use it. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x. And that's all going to be over h. Now that we have that, let's incorporate it with our function. So right now we have f of x, but we need to change it to be f of x plus h. So to do that, wherever we see an x as our input, we'll change it to be an x plus h. So we have negative x plus h squared plus 8 times our new input, which is x plus h, and then minus 5. And then from there, we need to subtract our original function. So we'll minus negative x squared plus 8x minus 5. And then again, that's all going to be over h. Now let's do some simplification in our numerator. So first of all, we can FOIL out our x plus h squared. So when we do that, we'll get x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. And then if we distribute this 8 to the x plus h, we'll get a positive 8x plus 8h. And then we'll bring along our minus 5. And now if we distribute this negative to the rest of our function in the parentheses, these two negatives will give us a positive x squared, and then minus a positive 8 will give us a negative 8x, and then two negatives will give us a positive 5. And then again, this is all going to be over h. Now let's simplify just one more time to get rid of this negative in front of the parentheses. So if we distribute that to everything else within this parentheses, we'll get a negative x squared minus 2hx minus h squared. And then everything else will come along with it. So plus 8x plus 8h minus 5 plus x squared minus 8x plus 5. And then again, that's all going to be over h. Now at this point, we want to combine like terms. 
So first of all, we have a negative x squared, which can be combined with the positive x squared. Well, the negative and the positive will just cancel each other out. Now our negative 2hx can be combined with anything. Neither can our negative h squared. But our positive 8x can be combined with the negative 8x. Now since there's a positive and a negative one, they'll just cancel each other out. And then likewise with our negative 5 and positive 5. When we add them together, we'll just get 0, essentially canceling them out. Now at this point, we're left with a negative 2hx minus h squared plus 8h all over h. Now you may notice we could simplify this a little bit. Every term in our numerator has an h, and our denominator is an h as well. So what we could do is divide each term by an h. So we'll cancel out our h on bottom, and it'll leave us with a negative 2x minus h plus 8. Now at this point, we need to remember that when we were originally doing these calculations, we were finding the limit as h approaches 0. So right now would be a perfect time to finish that up. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2x minus h plus 8. Now if h is approaching 0, we'll have negative 2x minus that h value we're approaching, which is 0, plus 8. So now when we simplify that, we have a negative 2x plus 8. Now this expression that we're left with is the derivative of our original function, which is signified by the f prime of x. So now we could use this derivative function to find the derivative when x equals 2. So let's do that. So we want to find the derivative when x equals 2. So we'll plug 2 in as our input value. And then from there we just need to evaluate the function. So a negative 2 times a positive 2 will give us a negative 4. And then from there we'll add 8, which ultimately gives us a value of positive 4. So the derivative of our original function when x equals 2 is 4. Now you know the basics to understanding derivatives.